Okay, moving right along in our technical setup, we're going to now set up Google Search Console, formerly known as Google Webmaster Tools. All right, so let me pull up, click up again, and just follow along on this task. So we have Google Search Console set up as the task, and uh, let's just move uh, through the subtasks. Uh, first, I just bring your attention to this note that I put in here is that uh, and this you'll understand this as I get into Search Console as I pull it up, but there's going to be a user assigned here uh, if you've set up AMP or if you order the AMP optimization uh, service because that developer will need access to Search Console in order to optimize it perfectly with AMP. Uh, the two really go hand in hand, so don't be alarmed if you see another user there. Um, it's usually going to be uh, an email related to AMP. You'll see AMP somewhere in the email address most likely. All right, so let's first confirm that we have access if the client already has Google Search Console or if we need to create an account under our Google Search Console account. So this is information that you'll find in that client info sheet that they onboarded from. Um, and just as a reminder, if you need to get quick access to it, if you, so you see how I just clicked inside the description box, again, if I do hashtag, hashtag, I can then quickly go into the sales orders. I can find the client onboarding form and I can just click on that and reference it that way and then pull it up directly. Um, but I already know that this client, this particular client, Colorbright, does not have the Google Search Console. All right, so I've confirmed that they don't have it. I'm just gonna close it because I know that we need to set it up. So I'm gonna set it up right now. Let me pull that up. All right, so here we are in Search Console and this is our, uh, this, this new agency that we started, uh, Google Search Console account. And uh, actually, let me draw your attention to this box. This is good because you can see that this is a notification from Google and they've switched, they've been switching all sites to a mobile first indexing. This is exactly why AMP is so important because we're giving the users a super fast website and it just uh, indexes faster, it's a better result, and it actually helps improve the, uh, the desktop version as well. All right, so I'm just gonna close that out. Um, so in order to add a new site, we would just click on the uh, top left here um, now, this may be a little bit different if you're setting up Search Console for the very first time, but uh, if you're at this point in, in, the, uh, in the process, you should already have your agency listed here, so whatever your domain is. So at this point, we're going to add a property. This is where you're going to add a client. So I'm going to add a property. And we used to use the URL prefix, um, which is a simpler way to do it, but I found that this is the best method now. It's the newer method, actually and we just enter in the root domain and we are then able to track any kind of subdomain any uh whether it's www or without www if the website is http or https right so it just covers all our bases it's the really it's the really the best way to um to do this so i'm going to just pop in the url here color bright painting dot com and I'll click continue. Now this way is a little bit more difficult to validate um, if you haven't done this before. It's actually not bad, but it, it may be, it'll be a little bit uh, confusing if you haven't done this before. So essentially what we have to do is go into wherever the website is hosted, not where the domain was purchased from, but wherever it's hosted. It could be the same. Um, if you have any confusion with this, um, let me see, you can actually, let me find this link here. Uh, look up where domain is hosted. I think I saw a way to do this. Yeah, so I'm just going to drag this over. So we have hostingchecker.com. So let's say I want to put in color brightpainting.com. Find hosting. And then I can see that it's hosted here with these name servers. Um, you may see, you know, something, it could say GoDaddy, uh, for the data center, something like that. I already have the, uh, cPanel information. So cPanel where it's hosted is really the ideal thing that you want. Uh, if all else fails and you just kind of get a little confused with it, you can just ask the client 
for their hosting information. And worst case scenario, you can email the hosting provider. You can email whoever it is, whether it's Namecheap, GoDaddy. Um, if it's on Cloudflare, that's really easy. Uh, but basically you need to find out where it's hosted and you can contact them and then give them this record to add. Uh, and it's a text record. I'm going to do it uh, for this client so you can see the process. So let me pull up. First, let me copy this. All right. And then I'm going to pull up cPanel for this client, which is right here. So I'm logged into cPanel and you can see this is for color bright painting. And on this page, you want to look for something related to DNS or uh, zone editor. Uh, I know that in cPanel, we look under domains and we can find right here, we have zone editor. Uh, it's DNS, but if you search for DNS, that doesn't come up actually. DNS would bring up track DNS down here, which is not what we want. They just have the image for it. Um, so it's zone editor. So I'm gonna click on that. And this is essentially where all the records uh, for this domain are. So we can see here's the domain right now. So we want to verify that's the domain we're working with. And then I want to click on manage. Okay. And then you can see all the records are listed here. We have a records, MX records, C name records, text record. Okay. So, uh, you don't really need to pay attention to all of that. What we do need to do though, is click on add record. And I'm going to put just the domain name color, right? painting.com. Now this may be different from one host to the next. Sometimes you can just use the at symbol and it automatically knows that it's that domain. But in this case, um, I actually did pull it up, but now I just need to delete that. So we just want the domain itself. Um, I believe Cloudflare allows you to put just the at symbol and it knows, but um, again, it's, it's just a shortcut to get to the root domain name. TTL, that can stay at 14400. If you have to type it in manually, then just go ahead and put that number. And then for type, we wanna change this to TXT for a text record. And then this is where we're going to paste that record I copied uh, directly from Search Console. And then I'm gonna click Add Record. Just let that go. And that's it, that's a simple as it gets really. Um, now let me go back over to Search Console. And the only issue with DNS records is sometimes it can take up to 24 hours to fully update. Um, so we've added it already. I'll click verify now, but chances are that it has not updated yet. Like I said, it takes a little bit of time sometimes depending on the host, uh, but I'll click verify and see. We might get lucky. No. So this, uh, it, it failed, but that's expected really. Um, I'll just click okay. So what we wanna do is just kind of just wait here and come back. Um, so I'm actually gonna pause the video right now and um, I'm gonna revisit this in about an hour and just see if it updates. And I'll try clicking verify. And if it does verify, I'm going to resume this video and uh, we can finish this up. All right, so I'm back and actually full disclosure, uh, it's been over 24 hours and it still did not verify. So what I did was I used the other method to verify um, and it just was synced with Google Analytics since we, since we had already added that. This is a much simpler way to do it. Um, the same, there was just some weird issue with the host DNS and I could have gone back and forth with them to get this done, but honestly, um, the juice was really not worth the squeeze because this is going to get the job done the same way. So when I entered the URL, all I did was, let me just see, maybe I'll just, uh, maybe I could delete it and start over. Um, so we've got color bright painting right here. Um, let me see. Already added it. Uh, nah, I don't think I'm going to do that. So basically what I did was this. Let's just add a new property to show you. So I did the URL prefix. And when I entered it, I just did HTTPS color bright painting.com. So you want to use the exact URL of what uh, the website looks like when it loads. So if there's, you know, if it's, it should be HTTPS. So just make sure that you use that because you need to put uh, SSL on the website. It's not even a question anymore, really. And then you click continue and it will verify once you've, um, if you've already done the analytics step, which you should have done, uh, 
prior to coming here. All right, so let me uh, look over in ClickUp real quick, and let's just see. Uh, let's see. Is this ClickUp? Yes. Okay, so what do we want to do? We've already confirmed that we have access to Google Search Console, and well, actually, we created it, and that's verified good. So the next thing we want to do is add a sitemap. Um, I don't have any notes here. It's pretty straightforward. A sitemap is a .xml file. And I'll go into Google, Google Search Console to show you. Uh, hold on a second. All right, so here we have sitemaps. And this is where we will submit our sitemap. But in order to do that, we have to know the URL. Um, so let me load up Colorbright Painting. I'm just going to open it up in a new window and then drag it over here. All right. All right. So let me go into uh, the dashboard. And this is going to be located wherever your SEO plugin is. So whether it's Yoast or all in one SEO, um, it just, just look in this section and I'm looking for something called an XML feed or sitemaps. And I believe for um, this plugin all in one SEO, it's under features manager, or feature manager. And we can see right here, yep, we see sitemaps, XML sitemaps. So I wanna activate that. All right, now that's activated. And let's see if it gives me the URL anywhere. Uh, all right, just make sure it stays active. Let me refresh this up. Oh, so there it popped up there actually, I don't know if you saw that. So it already created this sitemap. So let's click on that. All right, and we want to, we can keep all of this on by default. And I'm going to leave that. All right, all of that looks good. Now here is what we're looking for. Click here to view your XML sitemap. So I'm going to click that and we can see that essentially it breaks it down into uh, these two sections right now. It will eventually have um, more if you had posts, but I think it looks like we just have pages. So in other words, these are pages. I don't believe we have any posts for this client, which is probably why yeah, this is just the draft. I'm actually going to delete that. All right, uh, so let me go back over to the sitemap. I just want to verify everything again. All right, uh, yeah, so this looks fine. And essentially these are, it creates a hierarchy. So underneath the page sitemap, you'll see more information. So we can see all our pages are listed here. All we have to do is, su is submit the core sitemap though. So sitemap.xml because uh, Google Search Console will read this and then parse out these links and then everything else underneath it as well. So let me go back over to console and just going to paste in that because it already has the URL. So we could see colorbrightpaintings.com slash sitemap.xml. Let's submit that. And now we've just told Google um, to you know make sure they parse this URL periodically for new content. All right, it says it couldn't fetch it yet. Um, let's just, uh, sometimes you just have to wait and see, make sure it updates, especially since we just created that file. So it may not even be, you know, it's definitely not indexed yet or anything like that. Um, but every time I do a new change, I do like to clear cache if it's an option, I don't see it yet on this. So it could just be at the server level. Anyway, um, that's not really important. The main thing is that just confirming that this URL loads, which it does. And uh, all we need to do is just come back to Search Console and just verify that it has uh, fetched this at some point. So um, we can come back to that and look. So let's go back over to uh, let's go back over to click up. All right, 
that's not it. Uh, is this it? Yes. All right, so we added the site map. We do want to verify though that um, it was able to be fetched. So I would, you know, check that in 24 hours and just confirm that. Make a note to yourself, and uh, and just be certain that that uh, that it actually was able to retrieve that information. The next thing we want to do is go into Google Analytics and just make sure that it's linked to our Google Search Console. All right, so in order to do that, let's go into. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to pull up analytics. Sign in. All right. Uh, now, let me just close that out. So I'm in uh, the main section after signing in. So at the lower left here, you want to click on admin. And then under the property level, which is the middle column here, let's click on uh, all products under product linking. And I'm going to look for search console, which is right down here. So we'll click on link search console. And then uh, by linking your analytics property to your search console account, Search Console will be able to import it and uh, include it in your analytics reporting. So then let's click on Add. And then we'll just have to verify this. And then uh, we'll have to put the password in. Okay, load that up. All right, and then it's going to ask us, uh, you know, which property to use. So we're going to select Color Bright Painting. And then we're going to click save and click OK. And just let that load. And now we have successfully paired our analytics account with our Google Search Console account. And if I go back and then if I refresh this, Go back over to all products, go down to the bottom, and we can see now that uh, Google Search Console is, uh, oh, there it is, it's actively linked. So that's what we want to see, perfect. Let's go back over to our ClickUp settings. And let's go ahead and mark that closed. So we've actually finished our Google Search Console setup. The only thing I would say is just make sure that you come back over to your sitemap and refresh this. And actually, I just you just saw that as I refresh it, it obviously fetched it in that time and we have a success, which is perfect. Okay, so at this step, uh, at this point we now have our search console set up and it's linked to our analytics account. Um, so that's it for this. I'll see you in the next video.